Hi, my name is Sydney Montgomery, and I'm the owner and founder of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, which provides personalized 9th through 12th grade college counseling and law school admissions consulting. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about law school admission timing. I will talk to you about how law school admissions is on a rolling application cycle, what that means for you, and when's the best time to apply. Law schools operate on a rolling admission cycle, but what do I mean by that? A rolling admission cycle means that law schools will read your applications in the order that they come in and they will give out spots to their incoming class also sometimes in that order, but not always. In a rolling admission process, some law schools will start making acceptances as early as September or even October. So you can imagine that if a law school has started making their admissions decisions in the fall, by the time we get to March and April, they've already filled most of their class. Generally, there are three different stages. There's early, on time, and late. Early in the cycle is usually referred to applying any time from the time that applications open, which is usually September 1, all the way through maybe early to mid-November. Sometimes anything before Thanksgiving is counted as early. Now, these are not hard and fast rules, and every school operates a little different. What is early for some schools might be on time, and what is on time for some schools might still be early at other schools. But on time is generally defined as anything from after Thanksgiving through January, and for some schools, even February. Applying late in the cycle is generally anything after February. And this is where students really get confused because if you go on the school's website, a lot of schools will have deadlines in April, May even. Some schools have application deadlines in June. But the reality is that most schools have actually already filled their class by then. And applying that late really isn't beneficial. I want to break these three stages down for you a little bit and explain to you how you can best maximize your chance for acceptances and also for scholarships. So let's look at that first stage, applying early. Now, I once had a student that was told by an admissions dean that the law school admissions process is sort of like someone coming into a room full of cupcakes. And when they first walk into the room, they're like, who wants a cupcake? You can have a cupcake. You can have a cupcake. But then as they start to run out of cupcakes, they start being a little bit more judicious and thinking, well, I don't know. Do I really know you? Do I really like you? Do I want to give you this last cupcake? What if I want to hold the cupcake out for a really super amazing person I haven't met yet? Now, I don't mean to insinuate that law schools are just giving away acceptances at the beginning because that's certainly not the case. But in terms of looking more holistic at your application, and also in terms of the fact that they're able to maybe make some decisions in the fall earlier on in the cycle than they're not going to be able to make in the spring, you really do want to be in that space when they have plenty, in the space of abundance when they're not worried about running out of seats in their class. In fact, it can be crucial and really change your entire outcomes, applying in September versus applying in, say, February. I always tell students, you can be the same exact student, same GPA, same LSAT score, same essays even, and you can apply in September and get scholarship money, and you can apply to that same school in February and get denied. It can really make that drastic of a difference, and students so often underestimate the importance of timing in this process. Often students get confused because they want to compare it to the college application process, where there's a set early action and early decision timeline and then a regular decision timeline. If you're applying regular decision, it doesn't really matter if you submit your applications in September or December 30th. But when you're talking about law school applications, even if you're not applying to a school's early action or early decision pool, and there are some schools that do have those timelines offered, it still helps you to apply early, as 
early as possible because you also never get a second chance to make a first impression. So you want to show that you have all of your materials together, that you're prepared, that you are a strong candidate, that you are serious about going to law school, and that you're able to do everything with plenty of time. This is especially true if you are an applicant that has a GPA or an LSAT score a little bit below that school's median you really want to make sure that you're applying in September because the later it gets, the more closely the school is looking at their median and they want to make sure that their medians are a certain level because it affects their rankings and just some of their other metrics. But in the beginning of the process, they're not so focused because they know that they will get students later on down the line that have those higher scores. So they might look at you a little bit differently if you are a little bit below the median. Now, notably, US News and World Report did change their rankings this year. And so things like GPA and LSAT median don't matter as much as they did before. So that might change some things, but it won't change the benefits that you receive from applying early. Because the other thing that happens is if you apply early, you'll most likely hear back sooner, which also means that you might start the financial aid negotiation process and the scholarship negotiation process so much earlier. There's so much at play here when it comes to negotiating your financial aid and your scholarships so much more than college. You really want to have the most amount of time to make that decision. In addition to just being able to have the financial aid information, sooner, some schools do give out scholarships on a rolling application basis. So that means that they are giving out money as they go. And if you apply early, they haven't given out as much money. But if you apply later, they may have already given out substantial amounts of merit aid. Now, a special consideration to students that are applying to the most selective schools. If you're applying to schools in the T14, the top 14 law schools, or even the T25, but really focused on the T14, you want to make sure that you are applying by Thanksgiving. Because for those schools, applying in January is actually considered late. And so it's not even on time like it is for other schools that are not as selective. So I always suggest that if you are thinking about those top schools, you want to make sure that you get your applications in in September or October because that is the best thing for you. Now, there are some schools like Yale that do not have a rolling application cycle. They actually read at a given time, but you're still at a disadvantage if you apply to a school like Yale in January or February. Um, you really still want to make sure that you're applying in the fall. Now, let's talk about that on-time application period. So most students apply somewhere between Thanksgiving and January. That's just kind of how it falls. And like I said, for some schools, especially the schools that are not as selective, February is perfectly on time. There are a lot of reasons for why students, most students, end up applying in this time frame. A large reason is that students are retaking their LSAT exam. There are definitely schools for which getting a higher score on the LSAT exam, retaking that LSAT exam in October or November, and getting a higher score will do more for your application than applying early. So when we think about the boost that you'll get from applying early and the boost that we'll get from raising your LSAT score, in a lot of cases, your LSAT score is going to give you that higher boost. So I always tell students application timing is important, but having a strong application is the most important. So if you know in your bones that you can get higher on the LSAT exam, then I think it sometimes is worth waiting and retaking. Another thing that you can do is you can apply and ask a school to hold for your score if you're taking, you know, a retake. And a lot of schools will do that. Some schools won't, but a lot of schools will. But what that also means is that as soon as your score comes in, your application is at the top of the pile instead of students that are submitting after they get that test score, for example. You can do a lot to prepare to make sure, though, that you're not being rushed or being delayed because of your LSAT, and that is giving yourself enough time to prepare. I say it takes generally three to nine months to prepare for the LSAT, and if you're doing three months, you need to be studying at least three hours a day. Now, if you want to apply in September, that means that you should start thinking about your LSAT journey in January. That way you can take a June LSAT or an August LSAT and be completely ready to still submit in the fall. 
instead of foreclosing some doors because you're not ready yet or you're still studying. You know, if you start studying in June or you start studying in July, you're really not giving yourself enough time to do your best on the exam. You're not giving yourself enough time to have your strongest application. And inevitably, you're not going to end up applying early. You're going to end up applying on time. And for some students, especially students who end up retaking the January LSAT, now you are applying late in the cycle. So what does late in the cycle mean? I really don't advise applying late because I know that law school is a forever investment and it is a huge investment. If not a huge investment in money, let's say you get a full ride, it is a huge investment in time and your cohort and your alumni base is forever. So you don't just want to go to any school and rush the process and say, well, you know, these are the best schools that I could get into because I'm applying in February or I'm applying in March and I just want to go to law school this fall. I think you're really shortchanging yourself. I usually advise students that come to me really late in the cycle that they should consider waiting to apply until September where they're going to have their best chance at acceptances, their best chance at scholarship money, and ultimately the best investment in their future. You know, students also tell me, well, I'll just apply now and if I don't get in in September, then I'll just reapply. And I want to really stress that, one, you only get one shot at making a strong first impression. And it's not a strong first impression if you throw together your materials and apply in March or even April. That doesn't show that you are a forward-thinking and prepared candidate. The second thing is that you will have to tweak your essays. You can't just apply with the same exact materials that will look really lazy to an admission committee. They will want to see that you put effort into your reapplication. Can you get into law school if you apply in March? Yes. Can you get into law school if you apply in June? Maybe. To some law schools, perhaps. But the caliber of law schools that you're going to go to if you apply in March or June are just completely different schools than the schools and the caliber of schools that you're going to get into if you apply in September or October. And again, I don't really believe in shortchanging yourself or making a long-term decision based off of short-term emotions. I know it doesn't feel good to wait an extra year when you've told everyone you're applying to law school, when you've told everyone that you're going, but if you're not ready and your application is not as strong as it needs to be, then I hope that you would have the maturity and the grace to yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to apply in September when I'm going to have my best shot at getting into the best schools that I can get into with the most amount of money. And that is how you bet on yourself and your long-term career. Speaking of betting on yourself and your long-term career, this is a really big financial decision. And I believe that unless you're going to a top 30 T25, T20 law school, you really need to be going to law school with scholarship money. You need to be going, ideally, with at least half tuition. I know that law school is very expensive, but you want to make sure that you're getting a return on investment. And if you're going to a school that is ranked lower than 35, then you shouldn't be paying anywhere near full freight. It absolutely doesn't mean that there are less schools or that they are not as great. They're fantastic schools. But you should go with a substantial amount of merit money. I think taking a full ride from a school that's ranked 76, if it's in an area that you want to practice law in afterwards and it's going to help you and help you network with your career and you're not going to have debt, I think that's a fantastic move. You want to make sure that you're making wise financial decisions and you take yourself out of the driver's seat when you apply late in the cycle, when you apply after January, after February, certainly after March, you really are cutting off a lot of your decision-making power. So as a recap, there are three different stages of applying to law school. There's applying early in September, October, early November. There's applying on time late November to December, January, for some schools, February. And then there's applying late, anything February and later. You want to make a good decision, a wise decision, and you want to try to get your applications in as early as possible. Lawyers plan ahead. They make good decisions, they show good judgment, and they mitigate risks. 
This is the first step in your legal career, and I hope that you will treat this as you would your first case, that you would be diligent and thorough, that you would put your best foot forward, and that you do everything that you can to maximize your acceptances and your scholarship money. If you want to read more, definitely check out the College Express blog on this topic. If you like this video, make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell button if you want to know when the next video goes live for a notification.